Because he knew it was toward the end of that time. He sent out a dove to see if uh, the flood had ceased. Okay, so he sends out a dove, and the word of God said, when he sent for himself a dove to see if the waters had receded from the face of the ground. Let's keep reading. But the dove found no resting place. The dove found no resting place. Can the dove find a resting place in us? The dove found no resting place because there was still the flood out there. There was still destruction going on out there because the flood was to destroy all the evil that was going on. So the flood was going on still. The destruction was going on still. And the dove, when it went out there, it was it still chaos. The dove could not find a resting place because the dove does not rest in the middle of chaos. The dove found no resting place for the sole of her feet. And she returned into the ark for the water were on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her and drew her into the ark to himself. So we see here, first of all, that the dove symbolizes peace. The dove symbolizes peace cannot stay in the middle of chaos. The dove cannot stay in the middle of destruction. The dove is looking for a place to rest. And that's why we need to be careful not to, uh, not to uh, quench the Holy Spirit, not to grieve the Holy Spirit, not to make the Spirit sad, because the Holy Spirit always likes to stay in a place of quiet. The dove found a resting place, so the dove came back in the boat. Let's keep reading. And he waited yet another seven days. And again he sent the dove out from the ark. Then the dove came to him in the evening and behold, a freshly plucked olive leaf was in her mouth. And no one knew that the waters had receded from the earth. So the dove goes out, the dove examines the place, the dove see now that there is no life. Because the word of God says that he brought, the dove brought in a fresh leaf, freshly plucked olive leaf. So there was now life growing out there. It was the beginning of life again. And so the dove takes a piece of that leaf and brings it to Noah to announce the beginning of life again. Oh, hallelujah. And so the Holy Spirit symbolizes peace. It does not dwell in the midst of chaos. We just saw it. The Holy Spirit symbolizes fresh life, new life. The Holy Spirit comes in with a new leaf, fresh leaf to tell Noah there is now life out there. But that's not all. Let's go to verse 12. And see that the dove went out and did not return. The word of God says, so he waited yet another seven days and sent out the dove which did not return again to him anymore. There was a life out there. There was a life out there. So the dove went and stayed. The dove staying out there symbolizes freedom. The word of God tells us where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So not only does the dove symbolize peace, not only does the dove symbolize new life, but the dove also symbolizes freedom. And so when you talk about the Holy Spirit as a dove, we are talking about the Holy Spirit that uh, does not like chaos. And that's why the word of God tells us in the book of Acts that when they were all together in one accord in the upper room, we should have made this life. When the Holy Spirit was in, uh, when the uh, disciples were in one accord in the uh, upper room, that's when the Holy Spirit came because there was peace there. There was unity there. There was no chaos there. So the Holy Spirit descended. 
The Holy Spirit symbolizes peace. The Holy Spirit symbolizes freedom. The Holy Spirit symbolizes fresh new life. And that's why when the Holy Spirit comes upon Jesus, as we read in the book of uh, Luke chapter 3, the Holy Spirit comes upon Jesus to identify him as the Prince of Peace, like Isaiah 9 calls him. He is the Prince of Peace. So the Holy Spirit as a messenger, the dog as a messenger, comes upon Jesus and identifies him as the Prince of Peace. The Jews knew all this time that the Messiah was going to be the Prince of Peace. So when Jesus comes out from the Jordan and the Holy, the Holy Spirit in a bodily form like a dog descends on Jesus, the Holy Spirit is identifying Jesus as the Prince of Peace. And all those around who really had an ear to hear and an eye to see could know that this was the Messiah. And the Prince of Peace is Jesus. The Word of God also tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says that if you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Because the Holy Spirit brings fresh life. So when you give your life to Christ, and the Holy Spirit comes within you and seals you, you are a new creation. The Holy Spirit symbolizes new creation. And if you are not yet... In the Lord, we need to give our life to Christ, hallelujah, so that we can have fresh life. Fresh life is not going to come from this world. Fresh life is not going to come from any government. Fresh life is not going to come from any company we work for. Fresh life is not going to come from any family. Fresh life always comes from the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit alone. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Fresh life and symbolized by the Holy Spirit. I just told you that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. The Holy Spirit does not come to make us slaves. The Holy Spirit does not come to bind us. But the Holy Spirit comes to give us freedom to choose the right thing. The dove. The dove also represents purity. Let's go to Matthew 10, verse 16. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Matthew 10, verse 16. The word of God says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Matthew 10, 16. It says, be wise as serpents and be harmless as doves. So I go into the original Greek, because there are some Bibles out there that you can read in the Greek with the translation. And it tells me that the word harmless there means ungrinded, like it is not mixed. Harmless means that it is not mixed. The word that is translated there, it means a simple, some passages even say, some translations say simple as dove. And that word simple is translated here harmless. What it means really is that the, the dove is pure. It is not mixed with anything. And this is why the dove is the the dove and the turtle dove in the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, these were the only birds that can be offered as sacrifice to the Lord because they were pure, because they are pure. Doves represent purity. And so if the Holy Spirit is symbolized as dove, the Holy Spirit is pure. And if the Holy Spirit is pure, we need to guard the Holy Spirit pure within us. We need to be careful not to mix the Holy Spirit with strange everybody. Jesus accepts everybody and that's why he dies for everyone. Not to remain the way they are, but to come to him and be pure. And so the way you accept people is by setting them free. 
The Holy Spirit is pure and does not like to mix with anything else. And Jesus does not like to mix with anything else. When you read Deuteronomy 4.24, the word of God says that God is a consuming fire. And he also says that he's a jealous God. He is a jealous God. Unlike some other people will think, a jealous God does not mean that he is jealous of us. Who are we that he will be jealous of us? That is nonsense. He is not jealous of us. Hallelujah. He does not want to compete with any other power out there. Because he is above everything that can call itself God. He is above every spirit. He is above every power. He has no rival. He cannot be compared to anyone. And he will want to remain like that in our lives. He wants to have us for himself. Amen. That's the kind of jealousy the Bible is talking about. He wants to have us for himself alone. Not for everything else. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the King of glory. So the Holy Spirit is pure. And if we have the Holy Spirit in us, if we decide it, that we are going to walk with Jesus and we have the Holy Spirit, we need to seek to be pure. Let's move on to the Holy Spirit as a fire. The Holy Spirit is a dove, but the Holy Spirit is also fire. There is a time when the fire acts, and there is a time when the peace acts. They work together. Hallelujah. It's not like if you are you have the Holy Spirit as a dove, you cannot have fire. That's a lie of the devil. We have it all within us. And that's why it's important for us to know who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is dove, yes. But the Holy Spirit is also fire. The word of God says, so the Lord your God is a consuming fire. Let's go back to the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 3 to 4. The word of God says, Then there appeared to them divided tongues as fire. This was on the day of Pentecost. Uh, let me tell you quickly that this is not where Pentecost started. Pentecost started in the Old Testament. When you read Levi Leviticus 23, it tells you the feast of the Lord. And Pentecost is one of those feasts. But as the Jews went to Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost, on that day, as people were celebrating their regular holiday, that very day, the Holy Spirit descended. And that's why we say on the day of Pentecost. It's like saying it happened on a Sunday. Sundays were happening before. But that particular Sunday, something happened. So the Holy Spirit descends upon the disciples as they were together, I said to you earlier, in one accord. And so they were in agreement. There was unity. There was peace. And so the Holy Spirit descended. But this time when he descended, he did not descend as a dove. He descended as fire. And he descended as like individual tongues of fire on each person's head. So it's one thing to be in a fire church. It's another thing to be filled with fire. Because the Holy Spirit did not just come as just one big flame of fire descending in the place. It came as, you know, individual flames of fire descending on each person. It is my prayer it is my prayer this morning that every single person in this house, everyone that is in this house, this house that is a spirit-filled house, everyone receive the fire of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit descend upon each and every person in the name of Jesus. There shall be no one called the found in this house. Everyone in this house shall be filled with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended on the head of each person. Holy Spirit descended. Hallelujah. Now when the Holy Spirit descended as fire, how 
Should we understand fire so that we can understand the Holy Spirit? The word is very clear that fire purifies. Fire purifies. See, the dog is purity, right? And fire purifies. So if you are going to be pure and be like the dove, the Holy Spirit himself will do the work in you to purify you so that you can be like him as a dove. So the work is not even something that you need to do. All you have to do is make yourself available and it will burn down all those things that don't belong there. I said the Holy Spirit as a fire, the fire purified. Let's go to Malachi chapter 3 verses 2 to 3. The word of God says in the book of Malachi chapter 3, starting with verse 2, it says, But who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a launderer's soap. Verse 4, he will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them of go as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Now, let's stick with the purifier, the refiner. How do we purify gold? How do we purify silver? With fire. The people who work silver and gold, they will put the silver through fire. They will put the silver through fire. They will put the gold through fire. And the fire will burn the things that are not gold. So when people originally pick up gold, that gold is not pure. That gold is mixed with other things. And that's why that gold needs to be worked. It needs to be purified. And it is purified with heat. It is purified with fire. And so when you use the example of gold and silver being purified by fire, you understand here when the word of God says he will purify the sons of Levi, meaning he will remove from them everything that does not belong there. He will purify them by burning everything that is not of him. The Holy Spirit purifies. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 3, 13. 1 Corinthians 3, 13. The word of God said, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work. Of what sort it is. So fire purifies. And fire actually determines. If the thing is real or not. Amen. So the works that we do. The life that we live. Hallelujah. This life that we live. Will be determined as real as pure. If the Holy Spirit is at work in our lives. Praise the Lord. And so the Holy Spirit purifies, but the Holy Spirit is also, as a fire, fire is a light, a guiding light. Let's go to Exodus 13, verse 21, and we will see that, Exodus 13, verse 21. The word of God says, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so as to go by day and night. So here we see the fire appearing as a guiding light. And if the Holy Spirit is symbolized as fire, the Holy Spirit is also our guiding light. The Holy Spirit will teach us the way we should go. The Holy Spirit will lead us and we, if we listen to the Holy Spirit, if we obey the Holy Spirit, he will actually lead us on a direction that we need to go. The Holy Spirit is in our lives as a guiding light. 
This passage that I just read to you is when the children of Israel were walking in the wilderness. They were walking, they didn't have the direction. And so during the day, God gave them direction with a pillar of cloud. But during the night, he gave them direction with a pillar of fire that was light to them. So even though it was dark in the night, they can still see. I speak over your life this morning that whatever darkness has been going on around in your life is now pierced through by the light of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak right now over your life and I declare and I decree that every dark spot in your life is now transformed by the light of the Holy Spirit in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare and I decree over your life that where you did not know what direction to take, where you did not know what route to take, where you did not know what path to take, the Holy Spirit is enlightening your path. The Holy Spirit is showing you where to go. The Holy Spirit is teaching you what road to take. And even as he is teaching you that also, he is removing every impurity from you so that you can clearly hear what he has to say to you. And you will walk on that path that he has set before you. And you will enjoy it because glory is of the Lord. And he intends for you to enjoy his glory in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Darkness will not overtake you. Darkness will not have the final word in your life. Because even in the desert, desert is already a problem. The children of God found themselves, the children of Israel found themselves in the desert. Desert is already a problem. But in the middle of the desert, the night also came. So they were in a desert and they were in a night. Two problems. But as they were in the desert and as they were in the night, they were still able to walk and make it through on their way to the promised land because the fire of God, the light of God that was in front of them, overpowered the wilderness and the darkness. In the same way, the fire of God that is in you, the Holy Spirit that is in you, will overpower and will continue to overpower the wilderness and the darkness in your life in the name of Jesus. Darkness will not overpower you. The wilderness will not overpower you. You are coming through because of the Holy Spirit. You are coming through because of the Holy Spirit. I say you are coming through. You are overcoming because of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Fire is also an element of destruction. If, the, if fire can purify, that means that fire destroys the things that are not good. And so fire is an element of destruction. Fire is an element of judgment. Let's go to Numbers chapter 11, verse 1, please. Fire is an element of judgment. The word of God says, Now, when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. For the Lord heard it, and his anger was aroused. So the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. So there was something that they were doing. They were murmuring. They were behaving in a way that God did not like. And even as they behaved in a way that God did not like, the fire of God descended. As an element of judgment. My prayer is that we are escaping judgment because of the Lord in our lives, because of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But let me tell you also that this element of destruction can also be a blessing. Because when you look at the life of Peter, Peter was afraid at some point. When they were taking Jesus, Jesus to crucify him, 
And, and uh, this little lady saw Peter, this little girl saw Peter, and she said, hey, this is one of them. Peter said, who, me? No, me. I don't know him. Peter was afraid. He did not want to be killed. Peter was selfish. Peter was also arrogant. When the people came, the gods came to catch Jesus. Peter was the one that took the sword out to cut the ear of the soldier. When Jesus was telling the disciples that he was going to be killed and he was going to come back, Jesus, uh, Peter is the one that says that it was not going to happen. And Jesus turned around and said, get deep behind me, Satan. That was Peter. Peter was arrogant. Peter was afraid. Peter was selfish. But when the Holy Spirit descended upon them, the fire of the Holy Spirit burned all the selfishness in Peter. The fire of the Holy Spirit burned all the fear in Peter. The fire of the Holy Spirit burned all the arrogance in Peter and transformed Peter into someone who is now zealous for God. So on the day of Pentecost, Peter comes out after receiving the Holy Spirit. He comes out and those Jews that he was afraid of, those Jews that he did not like, you know, he had all kind of feelings about those people. Peter comes out and now preaches to them. And he says that these people that you see are not drunk. This is what Joel said, that the Holy Spirit will come in the latter days. Peter was able to speak to the Jews. People was able to preach to the Jews. People was able to talk about Jesus to the Jews because of the fire of the Holy Spirit that burned all the timidity, all the fear, all the arrogance, all the selfishness in Peter. And even as the Holy Spirit did that in Peter, it is my prayer that the Holy Spirit will burn every timidity. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will burn timidity within us. That the Holy Spirit will burn fear within us. The fear of men. The fear of judgment of men. The Holy Spirit will burn that within us. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit will burn within us all form of selfishness. The Holy Spirit will burn within us all form of arrogance. In the name of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will transform us like he transformed Peter. And people will not recognize us. Because we are coming we are being transformed in the name of Jesus. We are being changed. We are moving from glory to glory by the power of the Holy Spirit that is continuously burning from us all these things that do not honor Jesus. The Holy Spirit shall continue to transform us as fire, as fire burns down everything that is not of God. When you read the word of God and you see fire, fire also represents the presence of God. You guys remember the story of the burning bush. In the burning bush, the fire was in the bush. The bush was not burning and that's where God spoke to Moses. And that's where God sent a commission to Moses. So the fire in the burning bush represented the presence of God, even in that burning bush. If you are taking note, it's in Exodus 3, 2. I want us to go to Titus 2, 14. The word of God says, who gave himself for us? This is talking about Jesus. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us? from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people. If the fire of God is in you, purifying you, sometimes it is painful, but let us see that as a blessing because the word of God says that the Lord purify for himself his own special people. Are his own special people. So when the fire of God is burning down things that, that don't honor God and, and we find it to be painful, 
There were some habits that we had, and the fire of God is consuming those things. And it can be painful, but let us rejoice because it is a sign that we are a special people of God. He is preparing us for himself. The word of God said, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good work. Why does he purify us? So that we can have the zeal, the boldness to do good works. If we do not yet have the zeal that we need, we need to pray the Holy Spirit to come and burn down some impurities. There are still some things that cause us not to be bold enough. There are still some things that cause us not to be zealous enough. But there is one that can remove those things, and that is the Holy Spirit. He can do it. He can restore us. He can remove every form of impurity so that we can be zealous for the, king, the things of God. The Holy Spirit has fire. We need to be purified in order to be zealous. We're going to end with 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. The word of God tells us about quenching the spirit. It says, do not quench the spirit. We can put the spirit off. We can put fire off. Quenching the fire means turn the fire off. Okay? Causing the fire not to be active anymore. And so we do not want to quench the spirit, but there is something we want to do. We want to light up the spirit even more. Hallelujah. So what do we do? We don't quench the spirit, but we need to make the fire grow stronger. And so we're going to Act 28. When they had escaped, they, they then found out that the island was called Malta and the natives showed us unusual kindness for they kindled a fire and made us welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, so there was already fire, and Paul goes and grabs more sticks to put the stick in the fire. When you put stick in the fire, what happened? The flame grow bigger, the flame grow stronger. So Paul, by putting the sticks in the fire, is making a bigger flame, a bigger fire. Let's keep reading, and I'm in verse um, verse 3. But Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on, a f on the fire. A viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. Verse 4, so when the natives saw the creature hanging on his hand, they said to one another, no doubt, this man is a murderer, whom, though he had escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow to live. Verse 5, but he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. There's a reason we should not quench the fire. Because as long as we live on this earth, there's going to be snakes. There's going to be attacks. As long as we live on this earth, we're going to be wrestling. We're going to be fighting. So if we quench the fire, we will be overpowered. We will be destroyed. But if we do like Paul, and we keep putting sticks in the fire, we keep putting sticks in the fire, so the fire can grow bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, there's no snake that can destroy us. The people here were looking around to see if the snake was going to destroy them. You see, they are always watching, expecting. And that's why we need to keep the fire going. We need to keep the sticks in the fire. Keep getting the fire going.
Keep putting sticks in the fire. Let that fire grow within you. And when I talk about fire, of course, I'm not talking about physical fire, but I'm talking about the fire of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the zeal of God. I'm talking about getting the Holy Spirit to constantly be working in your life. And even as you do that, as you allow the Holy Spirit, you make room for the Holy Spirit. You don't quench the Holy Spirit, but you make room for the Holy Spirit. There is no snake. There is no snake that can destroy you. There is no snake that can kill you. It is impossible. It does not exist. Not under the watch of God. There is no snake. You see, the snake came and the snake was hanging on the arm. So the snake can come and do some things. But the snake cannot destroy you. Because if you have the fire, you can shake your hand. You can pick yourself back up. You can shake yourself. And the snake will have no choice but to run away from you.